A very good afternoon and welcome to the inauguration of the intake 2023 of postgraduate degree programs in environmental management by the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management of Faculty of Science, University of Kalania. With the successful continuation of two badges, here we mark the commencement of the third intake, celebrating the significance of postgraduate studies in environmental management. This venture is to shed light on the growing importance of environmental management in the concurrent world, aligning with global trends and unlocking the path to perceive rewarding careers related to environmental management area in a wide range of professional and industrial sectors, and to enhance the professional capabilities of variety of disciplines in industrial, corporate, and government sectors by having in-depth knowledge and high level of skills in environmental management. To commence today's proceedings, let us take a moment to honor our beloved institution, University, University of Kalania, by reciting the university anthem. Today, as we stand at the threshold of this new chapter, I would cordially like to invite the coordinator, postgraduate degree programs in environmental management, Professor VPA Virasinghe, to welcome the prestigious gathering to this remarkable location. Thank you, Kavishka. 
It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the virtual inaugural ceremony of the third intake of postgraduate degrees in environmental management 2023. First of all, I welcome with gratitude the Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies, Senior Professor Kapila Senaviratna, and Dean, Faculty of Science, University of Kalanya, Senior Professor Sudhar Kalinga Mudali for this evening. I cordially welcome Dr. Aruna Manipura, graduated from the Faculty of Engineering, University of Peradeniya, and Ms. Imeshi Sahabandhu, Senior Manager, Innovation at Hema's Consumer Brands Private Limited, for accepting our invitation to deliver a speech at the inauguration ceremony despite of their busy schedules. I warmly welcome the head of the department, Zoology and Environmental Management, Senior Professor Deepika Amarasinghe, and all other senior professors, professors, senior lecturers, and lecturers at the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management, as well as our emeritus professors at our department for this evening. I'm so happy to our, welcome our visiting lecturers for these postgraduate programs for the inauguration. Last but not least, I warmly welcome all newly enrolled students to the Masters and MSc in Environmental Management for this inauguration. I know most of you are juggling the demands of your job and family and the financial crisis in the country. Of course, I think everyone understand how the knowledge of environmental management can help you to pursue your career goals and for the educational goals locally and globally. To be successful in your postgraduate education, you must regularly attend and interactively participate in your online lectures, submitting assignments on time, participating in continuous assessments, and the reading the materials providing are important. You must plan things efficiently and according to the priority. Then you can be successful in your postgraduate studies. All the best for you. And I hope you all will enjoy this event. Thank you. Thank you, dear madam. Now, I extend my invitation to the head of Department of Zoology and Environmental Management, University of California, Senior Professor L.D. Amar Singha to address the gathering. Thank you, Kavishka. Good evening. Good evening. Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies, University of California, Senior Professor Kapila Seniviratna, Dean, Faculty of Science, University of California, Senior Professor Sudhat Kalinga Mudali, Coordinator of Environmental Management Postgraduate Degree Program, Professor Primali Vigrasinghe, Academic Staff Members of the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management, and two invited guest speakers and the newly enrolled postgraduate students registered for Batch 3 of EN. MG, that is Environmental Management Postgraduate Degree Program, and all ladies and gentlemen. We were able to select postgraduate students to follow Environmental Management Postgraduate Degree Program at the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management Faculty of Science from the academic year 2023 recently. From the selected candidates, are from the variety of working experiences on environmental aspects, and many are serving as employees of the industry, agencies, and companies, as well as private sector. The Department of Zoology and Environmental Management is going to facilitate providing you an expert teaching staff and the laboratory facilities for you to conduct the newly recruited postgraduate students 
at the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management and providing laboratory facilities required to conduct the practical sessions. I hope all the lectures, most of the lectures will conduct online, but practical sessions will continue to do as physical. And to help you in uh, laboratory sessions, we have an expert technical staff members attached to the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management to help you and to facilitate you. The department also takes the responsibility to complete the uh, recruited postgraduate student's degree on time and stipulated time period allocated for you so that you can be complete your postgraduate degree within the time duration. And we have completed two batches of such program completed exactly within the time and there is no hassle whatsoever. The department took trouble to extend the time period. And hi, uh, it is your responsibility also to complete your study target within the time frame to get your qualification, especially those who are registered for master's with one year research. Please, you have to plan your research well ahead the time so that you can have a very successful research which can be hopefully employ the your job related sector as well as that will help the country by at least to keep the sustainability development. And also it is your responsibility to complete the lectures, whatever the way we conduct, whether it is online or physically, to do the assignments as the coordinator said previously, as well as to complete the practical sessions on time and to submit the assignments will or given target date. And also, there are so many possibilities of you to conduct your research in different aspects or different sub-disciplines of the environmental management. Those who are uh, registered for research degree here, postgraduate research degree, so that you can select the suitable supervisor and the advisor may be from your company or the industry if you are working and also select the best research title that will suit the your job or the industry. And I hope knowledge you are going to achieve during next one or two years will definitely help you to put in real life situation to improve the uh, your service that you are going to render for the industry as well as to the country. And I will also welcome all the postgraduate students enrolled for batch three during this time and hope you will have a very successful time period of two years or one year at the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management in next from uh, next day onwards. And thank you very much. Thank you, dear madam. It's with honor I cordially invite the Dean, Faculty of Science, University of Kalania, Senior Professor Eskalinka Mudali to address the gathering. Very good evening to all of you. Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, Senior Professor Kapila Sinivratna, Head Department of Zoology and Environmental Management, Senior Professor Deepika Amarasinghe, coordinator of the Masters of Environmental Management programs, Professor Rimali Veerasinghe, guest speakers, Dr. Aruna Manipura and Ms. Imeshi Sahabandhu, members of the academic and non-academic staff, postgraduate students 
of the Masters of Environmental Management programs. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee for inviting me to be a part of this inauguration ceremony for the third batch of the Masters of Environmental Management programs. As an alumnus of the esteemed University of Kalania, one of Sri Lanka's top tier national universities, it is an honor to stand before you today. The Faculty of Science, renowned for its excellence, comprises eight academic departments and two academic units, catering to over 3,000 undergraduate students and 800 graduate students across various majors. It holds a distinguished reputation as one of the most respected science faculties in Sri Lanka. The Department of Zoology has been an integral part of the faculty since its establishment in October 1967. In 2014, it was renamed the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management, reflecting its commitment to addressing environmental challenges. Over the years, the department has continuously developed its academic programs through regular reviews and the enhancement of laboratory facilities. Initially, zoology was offered as a subject in the three-year bachelor's program, and in 1975, the four-year bachelor's honors program in zoology was introduced. Environmental management has emerged as a key priority within the Faculty of Science, and the undergraduate programs have incorporated sig significant components related to this field. Since 2016, the department has offered BSc and BSc honors programs in environmental conservation and management, attracting students who are passionate about environmental stewardship. Numerous graduates from the BSc honors programs, both in zoology and environmental conservation and management, have pursued higher degrees and secured prestigious positions in higher education institutions and research centers, both in Sri Lanka and abroad. The expertise of our faculty members specialized in various areas of zoology and environmental management has positioned the department as a competent entity to offer programs in the field of environmental management. Our faculty members have made substantial contributions to innovate to research projects with their work being published in highly regarded scientific journals. Additionally, the department offers master's programs in aquaculture and fisheries management which have gained popularity among candidates seeking specialized knowledge in these domains. I have no doubt that each one of you is privileged to be part of this esteemed state university and will experience a learning environment that is enriched by competent academics and state-of-the-art resources. You have the opportunity to earn your master's qualification while being nurtured in an environment that encourages intellectual growth and critical thinking. As the Dean of the Faculty of Science, I extended my heartfelt wishes for a rewarding and fruitful journey during your study period at the University of Kalania. May you excel in your chosen field and succeed in all your future endeavors. Once again, I wish you all a pleasant evening ahead. Thank you. Thank you, dear sir. Now, I respectfully invite the Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies, University of Kalania, Senior Professor K. Selim Ratner to address the gathering. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, Senior Professor uh, Sudat Kalingamudili, Dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Deepika Amarasingha, Head of the Department of Zoology and Environment Management, Professor Primali Virasingha, uh, Coordinator, 
of this program. Our guest speakers today, Dr. Anura Aruna Manipura and Ms. Meshi Sahabandhu, academic staff members of the department, candidates of the, this program, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the coordinator, Professor Veera Singha, for inviting me to this important occasion. As the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies and also as a member of this faculty, it gives me great pleasure to address you at this inauguration of this degree program in environmental management. On behalf of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, I welcome our candidates of this program warmly and cordially. Let me give you a very brief account of the uh, Faculty of Graduate Studies, FGS. As you know, undergraduate studies are coordinated and regulated by various faculties. Similarly, postgraduate studies are coordinated and regulated by the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Uh, the Faculty of Graduate Studies admits students to postgraduate programs. FGS is also responsible for specifying requirements for postgraduate admission, course requirements, course contents, and the schemes of examinations. Um, in addition, FGS is also responsible for establishing and regulating standards in respect of the quality of postgraduate teaching and research in the university. Uh, Faculty of Graduate Studies have boards of study and your program is coordinated by the Board of Study of Science. This postgraduate program has been approved by the University Grant Commission. And I heard that this is the third batch and I know when this batch was, uh, uh, the first batch was initiated and Professor uh, Deepika Amarasinghe mentioned one very important point that they graduate their students on time. See, this is something that doesn't happen in uh, many occasions. And this is a great achievement uh, that this program has uh, ever got. And, and as the FGS, and I really am happy to notice that. So this program is, uh, you know, conducted by this Department of Zoology and Environment Management, and it is one of the biggest departments in the Faculty of Science as far as human resources and other physical resources are concerned. And the University of Kalania is also, as Professor Kalinga Madhili mentioned, is one of the top ranking universities in the country. And the Faculty of Science contributes immensely to this high rankings achieved through research and many other patents and many other achievements. The faculty provides with you a friendly and conducive environment for your learning and research. So the up-to-date facilities and services provided by the Department of Zoology and Environment Management and also the services provided by the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Graduate Studies are all aligned to create an exciting academic environment for you. While congratulating you for becoming a part of this academic community of this university by enrolling uh, to this uh, master's program, I invite you to go through the program prospectus and other guidelines provided by the Faculty of Graduate Studies, as well as the Department of Zoology and Environment Management to get yourself more familiar with your new academic endeavor. I wish you a very successful postgraduate career. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear sir. Moving to the next segment of the agenda, we are privileged to have with us an extraordinary individual whose presence and accomplishments have made a profound impact on the world of academia. Aruna Manipura has obtained BSc Engineering, 
degree specializing in chemical engineering from University of Pera Denia, master's in environmental engineering from University of Moratua, and PhD in environmental biotechnology from University of Rhodes. He has over 25 years of experience as an academic, a researcher, and a practicing engineer in the fields of chemical and environmental engineering. He has contributed to over 40 publications in peer-reviewed journal articles, book chapters, local and international conferences. Currently, he is working as an independent chemical and environmental engineering consultant for manufacturing sector in Sri Lanka and number of local and international donor and research agencies. I'm honored to invite Dr. Aruna Manpura to share his valuable thoughts. Uh, thank you very much, Kavishka. It is a great pleasure to talk to all of you. Uh, first, I would like to thank Professor Virasinghe for inviting me for this occasion. Uh, Professor Kalinga Mudali, Professor Amara Singha, and Professor Seniuratne. All of you actually made my life very much easier. So I'm trying to share a few of my thoughts about the environmental management. In a uh, whole setup, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of roles and responsibilities of about the opportunities and challenges for environmental management professionals in our country or elsewhere. So let me share my slides very quickly, and I'm trying to actually go through some kind of like a um, um, yeah, um, extra strain from, um, uh, let me share quickly my slides so that you can see uh, what I'm trying to talk about. I'm not sure whether you can see my slides. Avishka, can you see? Yeah, we can see, we can yes, see. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let me start uh, the journey quickly. Uh, it would be kind of a specific uh, journey. The roles of environmental professionals, uh, challenges and opportunities. The topic that I was uh, given by Professor Veera Zingha. So I will share a few thoughts about it. Sure enough, as all professors highlighted, and uh, this is something we all have to deal with day-to-day -day life. So however, the lack of professionals in the country as well as get into the business, everyone, without having a fine foot, have, have, have made a certain uh, difficult situations. So I will uh, start with some of the objectives of this talk and the importance of uh, sustainable development goals and where we go from in terms of those goals. And I really love to present these very common as followers of ecology. That is something always related to our day-to-day -day life. Having said that, so I'm going to explain a little bit uh, how environmental management is embedded in social and economic fabric, then to discuss the broad challenges faced by the environmental professionals and to analyze the opportunities for environmental professionals. Certainly, I forget to congratulate the newly en entered uh, batch. So you are warmly welcome, my talk, and uh, certainly this is targeting for you. As you know that there are 17 goals, but it is very hard to express all these explanations. But I will be more focusing on food, water, and energy uh, mixes. However, we cannot talk environment in isolation. Certainly, we have to talk about uh, in all school thoughts of society or social aspects, the environment and economics. Let me quickly go through some of the uh, the numbers that we have to deal with in terms of uh, uh, our economy and uh, foreign exchange crisis, where you would uh, witness where we stand at and how far we have to go uh, in the days that all we are talking about export diversification. So please pay your attention to some of the numbers that I am showing in the screen. So if you look at these three countries, you can see where we are uh, standing at with respect to foreign exchange earning by exports. What I would like to see is actually these three two, two parameters. The per capita export earning with respect to what we have done here, but I'm not going to explain these charts. Please go to this 
uh, Atlas of Economic Complexity maintained by Center for International Development at Harvard University for more details, which is a really a gold mine of data where you can extract data from 1962 to 2020. In terms of import and exports and all the stakeholders, over 150 countries. In fact, I usually used to say when I was at Peradeniya, this is the gold mine to make the policy planning, whether it is our education, whether it is our foreign policy, whether it is our economy, whether it is our education. So I really encourage all of you to go and enjoy that. So what you can see from these numbers, Sri Lanka stands at a very low level. So that on the other hand shows the potential where we can go up. So the moment that you try to gear up these economic development, certainly the environment will be the, the next part. So how do we actually, whether it is to be compromised or not, how do you go this journey in hand in hand without harming the environment as it case they used to be after the Second World War in the rest of the world? All right, let's quickly look at what Barry Comner's laws of uh, ecology. Uh, nature knows better. The over 4.6 billion years of evolution would have given us the best conditions that we should have. However, everything is connected with everything else. So that tells us how even environment and economic development and the social progress would intervene each other. Certainly everything must go somewhere. If you recall your undergraduate or the early days of your learning, where we learn about conservation of laws, conservation laws of mass and energy. On the other hand, there is no such thing as a free lunch, as you all now suffer very badly nowadays. We cannot go against the second law of uh, thermodynamics. All right. So what I'm going to talk about is energy, food, and water nexus as the presence of these things, where I greatly appreciate that all you are once you graduated will contribute probably already you are contributing in these sectors uh, wherever you employed. However, if you look at the challenges faced by environmental professionals, those are numerous. So however, I would go to some of the key points, human food chain and the implications and what are the challenges we have. The population growth and the extended life has demanded a lot of foods. Certainly more food, different food habits that all lead to have our different lifestyles. However, the increasing population, you can see that how much food is to be produced and what resources are available for us and how do you make a balance? That is the place where environmental professionals keep an eye on their processes that we develop for meeting the demands of the society. On the other hand, uh, diminution agricultural lands and fishing, we always fight with the Indians, you know the challenges that we have. On the other hand, if you look at the packaging industry, how much influence our society, and as a result of that, things like microplastic, which you can, which you can find even now in the basement. So still we don't know the etiology of other unknown uh, things that will come to our lives in future. So we had a one CKDU. And if you look at um, the food tropics and um, how the levels are going, and it looks like the nature has a way of doing it. It's always like a tempest. We people are greedy. So we define something called efficiency. This is the place where we produce waste. As a result of that, people like you, once you graduated or you currently contributing so much to reduce this waste and plan things from the initial ideas to the commercialization of your product and post vigilant market activities and so on. So in such activities, global warming is unavoidable. So how do we actually address these issues are some of the biggest challenges that we are talking about. So more people, more energy, more industries, and this will lead to another story. So 
increase in pressure on the environment. So probably, as you all witness, the recent uh, disaster from uh, ancestral uh, ship and the consequences which have been quite well analyzed by the experts in the country who did their job. However, after two years, still we are waiting. There are certain broken chains still that has to be filled. So let's look at another index. So as you can see here, environmental performance index, we stands at 132, 132nd out of 180. What does it mean to us? And if we are to gear up our economy in terms of export diversification, we will have more challenges than what we experience. So this is to be considered very seriously all you have, uh, all you have to do. All right. So not only those environmental performance indices, index, uh, these are the other indexes that indices that we have. As you can see, things like global competitive index, ease of doing business, none of these indices we are not really good at at the moment. So now you can see the challenge ahead of us and how we actually strike a balance between these uh, development and the environment. Let me quickly go through another aspect. So where we have these opportunities for the environmental professionals. So as you can see from your right hand side, what you see is the 2010 forest cover. On the other hand, all the other factors, what you see from your left hand side, food manufacturing, forex, from tea exports of water and shelter, all demands the areas, the land. Uh, so basically, land utilization patterns will have a greater impact. So how do we face this challenge? The one is actually the energy security, which is key to everything else. As you can see, and as you have experienced during the last one and a half years, you would witness uh, all the troubles that we had lack of due to the lack of uh, energy security. What you see here in the, the map is the wind uh, wind power potential, which is estimated to be 12,000 megawatt in the country, whereas our peak demand in terms of generation is 2,500 megawatt. So not second to the wind, we have solar. Again, even though we have a high amount of solar radiation incident to the, uh, the surface, none of these sources can give the energy whenever we require. So the challenge is developing technologies, how to store this energy in low run in high capacity. Uh, this is another analysis that I did during the crisis where the biofuel blending can be help us to come out in certain things. Certainly we need to look at the total life cycle costing and the, and the other related analysis. There, which is found about half a million dollar can be saved if you go up to 15% of blending. So all these are happening within the country. So when you actually try to achieve something, something you have to give up, up as Barry Palmer said. So quickly, let me go to another aspect like food security, where our land is limited, certainly vertical farming are coming in handy. As you can see that whether it is aerophonics or hydrophonics or whatever, now you can actually improve the land productivity by factor. That is the beauty of it. Certainly the modularized uh, containers like this, the factories where you can reduce the carbon footprint and the water footprint, reducing the transportation and you can set up the factories closer to the market. So these are two examples. As a result of that, actually, there are so many opportunities for us to look for. I quickly went through some of the aspects in the country as well as some of the challenges that we have. However, I would like you to look at this particular book, Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, which will tell you the whole story of the new beginning of environmental management that was happening somewhere in the 1960s. Thank you very much. I hope you got something.
Thank you, dear sir, for that informative speech. Moving on with the agenda, we are fortunate to have this exceptional individual amidst us today, ready to share her wealth of knowledge, inspiration, and perspective. She is an innovation who loves answering the why and helping to translate science through effective communication. Having been part of the FMCG industry for the past 10 years, Imeshi is passionate on bringing change in consumer mindset towards the environment through sustainable and accessible design thinking. She is also the president of Voice of Women for Hamas Holdings PLC. She holds a bachelor's degree in biotechnology, genetics and chemistry, followed with a master's degree in biotechnology, sorry, master's in business administration and armed with a bachelor of laws from the University of London. I take the great pleasure of inviting Ms. Imeshi Sahabandhu, Senior Manager Innovation at Hamas Manufacturing Private Limited to address the gathering. Thank you, Kavisha. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everybody. Um, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members, distinguished guests, and most importantly, the bright and enthusiastic students of the University of Kalania Environmental Management Master's Program. A very warm welcome to all of you. Today marks a significant moment in your lives as you embark on a journey that will not only shape your careers, but also the future of the planet. I am deeply honored to stand before you as a speaker for this auspicious occasion. And I must say the future is indeed in good hands with this exceptional batch of individuals dedicated to environment management. As we gather here today, we find ourselves facing numerous environmental challenges that demand immediate attention and long-term solutions. The delicate balance of our ecosystems, the alarming rates of deforestation, the depletion of natural resources, the rising pollution levels and the ever increasing threat of climate change are just some of the pressing issues that we confront. It is here in the field of environmental management sciences that we hope to find a path towards a sustainable future. Environment management sciences encompasses a diverse range of disciplines. From ecology to conservation to waste management and renewable energy. It is a field that requires a multidisciplinary approach integrating both knowledge from natural and social sciences, engineering and policymaking. Through your studies and research, you will be equipped with the tools to identify and understand these challenges, and more importantly, propose effective and innovative solutions. Now, let me draw your attention to the profound impact that environmental management sciences can have on the consumer goods industry, where I'm coming from. As we know, the consumer goods industry plays a pivotal role in shaping our lifestyles and our economies. It encompasses the production, distribution, consumption of a wide array of products that impact our environment, from clothing to electronics, to food and packaging materials. The application of environment management in the consumer goods industry is crucial for achieving sustainability and minimizing environmental footprints. By integrating environmental principles and practices into the production and design process, we can significantly reduce waste, conserve resources, and mitigate pollution. Through the life cycle assessments and eco-design strategies, we can create products which are not only functional and aesthetically pleasing, but also in environmentally friendly and energy efficient. Moreover, environmental management sciences can help the consumer goods industry transition towards a circular economy where products are designed to be reused, recycled or composted rather than disposed of waste. This sh shift towards a circular economy reduces the extraction of raw materials, decreases energy consumption, and minimizes the release of harmful substances into the environment. Additionally, environmental management can guide the industry in adopting sustainable sourcing practices. By promoting sustainable, responsible supply, supply chains, Companies can ensure that raw materials used in, our, used in the products are obtained through ethical and environmentally conscious methods. This includes supporting fair trade, reducing deforestation, and avoiding the use of hazardous chemicals. 
If I were to just give you some examples of how Hemas, as an industry, as an industry leader, and also as a company, looks at you know how we can preserve the environment and how we can develop a sustainable business model, we look at three pillars. One is the responsible plastic manufacture and disposable practices. So Hemas has an extended producer responsibility, which means we have committed into reducing 30% of the plastic used in our packaging by 2020, 2030. Plastic waste generated, we want to recycle 100% of the plastic waste generated during manufacturing by 2030. And also creating, like I mentioned before, environmentally safe products. Se the second pillar being safeguarding our ecosystem. Hemas is also committed to in um, saving and protecting the environment by reforesting. We protect and nurture our endemic species by reforesting and sustaining over 1,000 acres of forest cover in Sri Lanka by 2030. To be a catalyst, we want to collaborate with you and create partnerships with you in promoting initiatives that protect our endemic species. Third and final pillar being protecting our natural resources. We want to reduce 25% of our energy by 2030, energy consumption, and 25% of the energy to be ob uh, obtained through renewable resources. If you actually look at the current business, we have we produce about 10 to 15% of our energy from the plant itself through our solar panels, and we're committed to increasing this number in future. If you look at some of the other initiatives that we have undertaken, you will see in the market, the BC cotton bud, the baby shermy cotton bud, we started out having complete plastic um, cotton bud, I think about 10, 15 years ago. And now we have migrated to a completely reusable bamboo cotton bud, which can be disposed easily and is safer for the environment. We also look at community engagement at all levels where we do this plastic recollection through using the community and actually empowering the community also to take care of the environment around them. If you look at our other subsidiaries like Morrison PLC, we're looking at completely rainwater harvesting of which they have actually implemented a pilot project. And we use that harvested rainwater into um, watering our gardens and actually uh, our vegetation and our cultivation projects. Um, if, you look at our, if you look at our environmental uh, sustainable goals, which I took you through earlier, uh, those are the goals that we want to achieve. So these goals are very steep goals, I would say, and very challenging for us only as a business to, uh, to conquer. That is why we need you, this, a talented bunch of individuals who knows how to create this kind of ecosystem and actually push us towards these business, driving business goals, which is better not only for the business, but also for the planet. So like I said, the responsibility of this does not solely lie with the consumer goods industry. As future in environmental management professionals, you have a crucial role to play. Your knowledge and expertise will enable you to influence and guide business towards sustainable practices. You will have the power to advocate for stricter environment regulations, encourage corporate social responsibility, and foster a culture of sustainability within the organization. So in conclusion, the field of environmental management holds immense potential to address the environmental challenges we face today. As you embark on this exciting journey as, a, as the batch of the Environmental Management Sciences Program at the University of California, I urge you to embrace the power of knowledge and innovation. Let your passion drive you to explore new frontiers, challenge conventional practices, and contribute to a more sustainable future for generations to come. Remember, you are the change makers and the guardians of our planet. Your dedication, creativity, and determination will shape the future of environment management and ensure a world where humanity and nature can thrive together. Congratulations once again. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear madam, for those inspiring words. This inauguration ceremony not only symbolizes the beginning of an academic endeavor, but also signifies the spirit of collaboration, exploration, and intellectual unity that will permeate throughout our institution. To our distinguished guests, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for joining us on this momentous occasion. Your presence here today further reinforces the importance of fostering a vibrant academic community and the recognition of the transformative power of education. 
Congratulations to all the postgraduate students for your exceptional achievements thus far. This will be the commencement of an exciting and transformative chapter in your academic journey, one that will open doors to new possibilities, unveil uncharted territories, and shape the path of your future endeavors. May this serve as a catalyst for inspiration, collaboration, and intellectual exploration that will lay the foundation for your future success. Thank you. Marking the culmination of this prestigious occasion, let's pay tribute to our nation by reciting and raising our voices for the national anthem. <laughs> Yeah. 